Okay. You know, as Keith says, um, my background is mapping. Um, so I'll uh, let you read that one. I go out, I just uh, record stuff, walk around the forest, have fun, record stuff, bring it back, and then put it on from that and give it all to Keith. Um, I'm not, in, not an ecologist, so I don't do the interpretation, although I do have some perceptions after spending the last eight years talking to people that are working in the forest, talking to the people that have given me help this year, and people that from New South Wales, forests and uh, some of the elders from up at Barma, GMW staff. So I've talked to a lot of people about issues that I see with the with Arrowhead in the forest. This year, the well, first time I did a survey was in 2006. I recorded where any known infestations of Arrowhead had been located. I then went out and where it was areas that were considered to be at risk. I went out and I visited those sites and I recorded from those places a GPS coordinate, an estimated area, so you go and look and say, yes, that's a metre by a metre, that's a square metre, um, unless it was a bigger area that I had to step out. But a lot of it's an estimated area. The density of the, the plants and the uh, ease of access that we've, we've got there. So with those definitions, the area I estimated the density range from a dense infestation of 80 to 100% ground cover of Arrowhead down through to uh, scattered infestations where it's less than 10% ground cover. The access, easy access, you can drive a vehicle up where you can probably get a, a hose from a, from a spray unit and spray the weed if you were going to control it that way. Down to places where it was almost impossible to get to, and I mean, I'm walking through 30 centimetres of, of mud through the lake to get to the little trying to find my way through a, a wall of, of giant brush. Um, and there, the, that's the information that I recorded the, in 2006, 2008, 2010 and 2012. I went back to the same locations and recorded the same information to see if there had been any change in the information there. Now, I'm going to just move over here because uh, this is the forest that we did. You'll notice that there's Oh, did I? Okay, well, be very careful. I was trying to push the pointer button. These little mauve dots there are locations where I found Arrowhead in the first three surveys. The coloured spots are the ones where I found it in 2012. You'll notice that uh, with Tonalong Creek, Gulf Creek, um, Tuller Creek down here, Barmer Lake and Barmer Creek, I didn't identify any arrowhead in the last survey in 2012. And that's because they, those areas were subject to a, a extensive, extended inundation and high water flow from the previous floods. The fact that I didn't identify any there, I think is a concern because nothing else had germinated there, so arrowhead may still be viable in those, those systems. And I'll highlight that by just going through and showing you a couple of, this is, the earlier vegetation, you can see the force of the floods, the impact the floods had, and there's very little else germinated there, and that's uh, Tongalong Creek. Same with Barmer Creek, and the same with Tuller Creek, and through the Barmer Lake where the giant brush had, was taking over after the floods, there's very little of anything. So I can't say there is or there isn't arrowhead still viable in those locations. The areas up <coughs> along these creeks up here, the land must be just that little bit higher elevation. The floods didn't have the same impact. Uh, there's always been arrowhead through those creek systems. But Budgie Creek and coming down here to War Creek, they were impacted by the floods. There were a lot of locations where the arrowhead had disappeared, but it had turned up in other locations. So it was a, a lot more variable. But these creeks up here, along the runners coming off the, the Murray River, again we show you that in the earlier surveys, Arrowhead existed quite um, strongly there. But in 2012, you can see that it's just taken off hundreds of metres of, of solid Arrowhead going back into the, into the forest. Same with Island Creek. And they those ones, those creeks run up to some of the wetlands and they, they, they stop 
normally at a wall of giant rush where it it's, doesn't seem to have got through or hadn't seemed to have got through the, the giant rush. This area down here, the top wall plains, cutting creeks, in the past I just recorded that as one um, site, but it's a very complex area, so I've broken it up for statistics or for the record. And don't take a lot of notice. What I'm just pointing out here is this slideshow is, is set up so that if anyone's a copy of it, they get the full data, they can get the full data based on these, um, these areas. Again, if you look at this area, you can see that there's a lot of areas where Arrowhead has been in the past, and this year it wasn't. There are a number of points down here around the lake where I just couldn't get to physically because of the, the, the water level and the giant rush. You can see that the, the creek line, again, as I said, it's been impacted by the, the water flow. Um, I've marked these as, this is a, uh, a dense location. It was Arrowhead there in previous years. Um, this area in here, it was the first time I'd found Arrowhead there, so I thought, well, I'll go in and look at those in a little bit more detail and put a, a <coughs> risk factor on them as I, as from my perception. This area here is solid Arrowhead, four, four hectares of Arrowhead. Um, this area in here was nothing but after the floods, it's a sheet of water, ideal nursery for the Arrowhead to germinate, and uh, it, you can see where it sprouted up down here. It's dispersed Arrowhead, there, but again, relatively thick. Um, it looks as though it's coming up fairly thickly. I've noticed there's a few isolated spots, which I'll mention a bit more later. Uh, over time, it's spreading around the top of the wetland, but right along here and down around here, there's a wall of giant rush. So the giant rush is actually stopping it from moving into the, the body of the wetlands. There's a the giant rush along here. There's a, a wall of a line of arrowhead there, and there's a, a slightly higher ridge of land going through there. So it's got a very specific um, niche that it, it's occupying. This area up here is a, a wetland. Again, there's a wall of giant rush around around the edge of it and the arrowhead is uh, spreading down along the top. 2012, I didn't find any arrowhead in that wetland, which I, I can't understand, and you might see why. Again, demonstrating just what it is, this is that area A. In 2006, it was just a quagmire of, of chewed up arrowhead. The pigs have got into it and really broken it up. They're having fun. 2008, in the drier year, and 2010, it was very little there. In 2008, I didn't find any. And then in 2012, that whole area again has just expanded as solid arrowhead. We look at the area, what I call B here, <coughs> high risk area. 2012 was the first time I'd found it, but after the floods, you can see what it's like. And you've got arrowhead just germinating in isolated spots right across the whole lot. So it's not plant material just washing in, I don't think. It's probably from seed that's been washed in and, and been sitting there and germinated <coughs> under the, the ideal conditions. This is the area that are above north of the, the War Creek. Early, the, it was like that in 2008, 2010, 2012. It looks very much the same. It's about 10 centimetres of water. And this, in 2012, I couldn't find any arrowhead, even at the locations that I had found it the, the two years earlier. Even though I was able to get to those spots, it wasn't as though they'd been crowded out by the, the giant rush. And those little points that I pointed out, these are, are locations down here, well away from the, the watercourses, well away from the wetlands, areas that in the past I would not have considered having found any arrowhead. But just walking, one day I was walking across this area and I saw a leaf and I had a look and there was a whole sprinkling of germinating arrowhead in an area that shouldn't it? And then I found it in a number of other places. So if you, from the quality of photos, it doesn't see it, but there are arrowhead plants sprinkled around those whole areas. So rather than trying to look, take in all the figures that I've got here, what I'm trying to highlight here is 2006, we had 48,000 hectare, 48,000 square metres of arrowhead. It changed, dropped off in the, the drier years. And in 2012, there was a bit more, but you've got to remember that it's not including any data from Tongalong Creek, Barmer Lake, Barmer Creek, those areas that were still impacted by the, the floods. 
and if they do germinate then it'll change that significantly. Again this slide is here only to show that the number of <coughs> small infestations, little clumps less than two metres square in 2006 <coughs> has tripled and overall the, the number of infestation, number of discrete clumps of arrowhead through the forest that I found has gone up two and a half times. So it, it's, it's spread significantly through that, that time. The, this shows, as I said, I, wanted the, I recorded the ease of access and again the easiest access <coughs> is about the same and that, that indicates the, the locations that are off the runners coming off the Murray River. So they're, they're, still, they're still there, but the very difficult ones, they're the ones right down at the bottom end or the very top edge of um, Barmer Lake and um, uh, War Plains. So my conclusions, my perceptions, I should say, overall, is that everywhere that I've found Sagittaria in the past, I would expect to find viable plant or seed material there uh, because it, it disappears this year, but next, the year after, it seems to come back. So I'll, that's only my perception, and, and it's up to someone else to disprove that. And given the number that of, of plants I've found spread throughout the forest, um, I would uh, expect there to be viable seed that's been spread through the, the forest uh, at a wider level. Um, there were a few areas where it was uh, crowded out by the giant rush. Um, now, I'm going to just, I had a number of recommendations written down there. Sorry. <laughs> um, and one of them was that, that about the monitoring rate. And I'm going to change what I had written down there uh, because the monitoring rate, I think the areas around um, Barn, oh, the, uh, coming off the, the runners at the top end of the forest, they need to be monitored every couple of years as we've done for Tomalong Creek because they don't impact, have as potential an impact on the, the wetlands. The areas around War Creek, the top end of Barmer Lake, I think they could be monitored every year because as was said, um, we want to look at, Chris Norman said it this morning, we want to look at the environment, our environmental triggers. What's the, the mm. impact of, of the weed, how it reacts to individual years and as this shows, every year is different. Um, and Keith, you even mentioned this morning that, that the repeat monitoring, there's a, a great value in doing repeat monitoring just to uh, see what, what's happening. River regulation, um, as Lindsay said before, it's favouring the weeds, favouring giant rush, and I believe it's favouring things like arrowhead. You can see that the, the watering, water in the summer, not as much flooding in the, in the, the winter. I think it's favouring the, um, the weed. And uh, there's anecdotal evidence that desiccation can kill Sagittaria would like to know what's there. So maybe there's a, a, a chance of having a, a research project to look at what type or what the duration of flooding or, or, or uh, desiccation would be advantageous for controlling the, the plant in the, the forest. And the only other thing I'd like to say, this survey was done in Victoria this year. The first two surveys were across both sides of the river. This, the second two were just Victoria and it's a, it's a whole the forest issue and I don't know, I dare say now that we've got a national park it will be done on the, both sides. So they were just my um, perceptions and thoughts about what I've found in the, the eight years that I've been going up there. Any questions?